All right, so for this series of the Chatters Box, we have Hall of Famer. How does that sound? Oh, it sounds great. Say it again. Hall of Famer, <laughs> Ted <Louder>. Simmons. <laughs> Hall of Fame, whatever you say, I'll just do it. Hall kidding. of Famer. Just kidding, no. Uh, okay. Newly inducted Hall of Famer, Ted Simmons. Mm-hmm. Finally uh, inducted Ted Simmons, in my yeah. opinion. And um, it is uh, great to have you step into the Chatters Box with us. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, easy speasy. Real and, easy to do. And you know uh, my co-host, Dave LaPointe. I do. Yay! <laughs> I do. Yay! <laughs> That's the you you don't know that even though we were, I was traded for him at one time, he also helped me with my career with the pits that he taught me. Okay. And Cut a lot fastball. of people don't know these things, but he did so much for the game of baseball besides just play it that a lot of people just don't know that. But I'm very thankful that uh, one off season in St. Louis, I became his friend, and he taught me a cut fastball and gave me another five, six years of my career. Huh. So I, I want to touch on that first. You guys were traded for each other. Yeah. Uh, Ted, well, he you, was in the deal, and I was in the deal. You, you There's were, so many people in the deal, I can't remember <laughs> who they all were. And that deal was? You want to elaborate on that deal? Well, you know, Fingers and I and Vukovic went to Milwaukee. Green and... Lascano, Larry yeah. Sorensen, and there, myself. There you are. The big okay. guy in our end was David Green. Oh, yeah. He was, uh, you know, Sherlock, you know, star player and got distracted along the way, and like many of them do, and didn't quite pan out as well as he was projected to. But on paper, up front, you're going to want him. Mm-hmm. So did you guys know each other before that trade? No. You and, you no, and Dave? I didn't know. No, I hadn't yeah. been in the big leagues like no. maybe – well, I was 30 days in Milwaukee, and he was in the National League, so I didn't. That's the only time right. before then. So then you met in St. Louis. Explain that. In the World Series. No, no, no. We, okay. well, I mean, the next time I saw him, I pitched against him in the World Series. Right. And then after I got traded to the Giants, uh, Teddy was still in Milwaukee. So he said, Why don't you, you know, you've got a great changeup. Why don't you learn this pitch that's going to break inside the right handers? Right. Everything with his changeup. And his sinker was going away, so the right-handed batter could look out there and not be afraid middle in mm-hmm. for anything. Well, his fastball was short, but when it's cutting, it's mistakenly red after about the first 10 feet, and you think you're going to get his mediocre fastball, and it ends up on your hands instead of on the nitro zone because in that last five feet visually, it comes into the right-handed batter, and if it's thrown in the right location, up. Mm-hmm. It ties that right-handed batter up just awful. And and he's he's the only one that told the way he taught it to me is that it has to break in the same plane mm-hmm. right. because because if it breaks on the same plane, the batter doesn't see it breaking. It kind of just moving on them. He says if it has any depth to it, it's going to look like a slider. They'll be able to get it. So right. he really went over and over. So I throw it a couple of times and get it to move side to side. Yes, like that. that's the way it's supposed to. It do. should look like this. He said, I got it. And he gets the feel, throws it 10 more times, catch it 10 more times. That's the one you want to keep. That velocity and that visual will produce outs at the major league level. Mm -hmm. Left on right or right-handed pitcher on left-handed hitter. Yeah. Of course, I was a jerk then. I didn't throw it in a game until I saw him in spring training the next year. (laughs) And I broke his bat in about 17 places. <laughs> so, right. Surprise, Teddy. Come on, Teddy. he used it against Surprise, you? Surprise, Teddy. He expressed yeah. his concern about my, my feelings that day. But after that, <laughs> we've we've known each other for a long and time. I and taught you that. Yeah, that so then you throw you it to me? You can't do that. That's yeah, horrible. That's bad ball That's right horrible there. now. That's bad ball. So did, I mean, <laughs> as a catcher, were, was there guys throwing cutters? I mean, Oh, you, yeah. I went through the same thing with Mike Caldwell, oh. who was a sinker ball pitcher, had the straight change in sinker ball. And he just relied on a power sinking fastball. I said, go ahead, try and hit it. I don't care if you know where it's going to be. I said, Michael, if you throw the cutter up here, as I've just described with Dave, um, if you throw that, they'll hook it foul for strike one, and they'll hook hook it foul for strike two, and they'll be 0-2 with you, and they haven't seen Mm -hmm. your sinker yet. And so, pal, come on. And he won 22 that year, that Mm. one year in Milwaukee. I mean, just strike one, strike two, and they hadn't seen a sinker. If you were a right-handed batter, you were about to be out. So um, he Mm. adapted the same way. Yeah, so it's interesting you say that. I was a sinker baller Mm -hmm. and change-up, and I had a big curveball. Yeah. And when um, I was rehabbing, one of my best friends, a left-handed hitter, and he was rehabbing at the same time. And he had been to double A and I had been struggling in A ball. 
Mm. And he was standing in on my bullpens, and he said, why don't you throw cutters? Everybody in double-A throws a cutter. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, I'm just coming off Tommy John. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I want to start cranking on that. that you right, know? right, right. And, uh, and, and so I started throwing. It changed my career. I bet it did. Because now exactly what you're saying is I would throw the same pitch that would cut to the right and cut exactly. to the left. Exactly. And, and so for me in my career, I was better against left-handed hitters mm -hmm. than I was. I was like our, I was like gotcha. our de facto lefty yeah. in the pen. Because I would throw that, and it's funny you yeah. say it. We've never talked about this. No, I would throw my cutter up and into lefties. Yeah, that's the place. And and then I would throw my changeup or sinker down and away. Yeah, and then that the would place. that would get me to where I could throw my curveball, and I could throw that to anybody. Yeah, and at two strikes, if the batter hadn't seen your curveball, I remember writing you up as a scout in your curveball. Yeah. So if a batter got a major league hitter got to two strikes and hadn't seen your curveball yet, they were going to be out. Right. Right. The, the two strikes, they swing and miss it. Yeah. Because visually. I mean, it disappeared. And 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 that cutter. It, so I would give up a lot of foul homers. Yeah. Because the Strike only one. if you threw it in off the plate, the only way they could get to it was to hit it early enough that it was foul. And the bat angle, even on a nitro zone, would hook it foul. Correct. It's yeah. only pitch too that it didn't matter. You could challenge anybody you want with it because it really wasn't a hole. You would have to throw a really really bad one to have something bad happen. Yeah, out over the plate with mediocre velocity, but you didn't need velocity for the pitch correct all you had to do was put it in that location yeah and in the last three feet it would move two inches mm -hmm. or three inches just enough to shift from that barrel or that nitro zone into just above the trademark and you'd get jammed yep now so it's solid i did, did give ever, up were a you ever would i'm sorry Car i did yeah. give up a lot of home runs the righties on it yeah, well, so I made, because it's a nothing fastball, exactly right. and it backs up a lot. <laughs> so what you just said, <laughs> I, I never made that mistake. To, to lefties, I always got it in off the plate. That's to right. righties, I would make that mistake. And 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 it's exactly what you said. It was a medium-speed fastball with no movement that backed yeah. up. And, and um, that you, you, you pitch on Mars that way. Yeah, yeah. I don't care who's playing on Mars. You can use a cutter up there if you're right-handed and throw it to left-handers. Yeah. And vice versa. Well, it's funny. A lot of people think that that cutter came in the game with Mariano Rivera. Right, they thought he was kind of the inventor mm -hmm. of the cutter. Not true. I mean, his is probably the best of all time. Ever. I mean, it was Ever. unbelievable. Well, it, it doesn't because it, it was velocity. Yeah. it was vo velocity. <laughs> yeah, a velocity cutter. Yeah, but, but it had been going had on for a while. Drop to it. Yeah, I mean, that's funny. He still got away with it, but got yeah. ninety six helps. At that velocity, you, you, there's no adjustment in that last three feet a hitter can make. Yeah, were you with Hub Kittle at all? I sure was. Hub Kittle taught us the 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 sinker that would break straight down. And you couldn't see it, so it was another one of those ones. A, a pitching coach, a catcher, mm -hmm. yeah, and mm -hmm. the pit, pitcher can't see a break, and a batter can't see a break. Right, visually, it's, it 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 um, vanishes. Well, and they say too, uh, from a hitter's standpoint, like you, by the time you swing, you're actually swinging at where the ball used was, to be. It was where it used to maybe be. Maybe whatever, like hitting a yellow ball at a at a batting range. You know, you're hitting the glare of the light yeah. uh -huh. that's coming yeah. off the yellow and plastic ball. So if you can mm -hmm. make that ball, if you can manipulate that ball just an inch or two in that last, like you're saying, that last five to ten feet, mm -hmm. the hitter's eye can't recognize right. that, and so they think they're squaring it. Correct. But it's a miss hit. So it's not a swing and miss pitch. It's a miss hit pitch. That's what which when is you, a ground ball or a foul ball. Yep. Which or is foul a strike out to first. Yep. Or an out. Yep. Well, another thing yep. he taught me about it is there isn't a person in the world that can practice hitting a cutter. No. The machines and coaches can't throw them. Yeah, no. So well, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Well, and it makes your change up and sinker so much better because yeah. now you got to protect in, so you're right. not you're not diving and, out. Yeah, over. It's, it's something going the other way hmm. from your normal stuff that has brought you to the major leagues. Yeah, I mean, it, it's in out, up down, hard slow. Yep. And the guy who can manipulate that in all those multiples um, are usually. The most effective pitchers. The game's changed a lot. Golf that course hasn't, that hasn't changed. Golf course, <laughs> right? that Golf changed. course approach to pitching. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. Well, this well, I could sit here and talk this all day. Uh, I love it. But uh, the the this series here is the is the eighty two championship of the Cardinals and yeah and you're a part of that Milwaukee team mm -hmm. that they played traded from the Cardinals and how long were you here with the Cardinals prior ten years to that trade so ten years here yeah um, you end up being traded to Milwaukee and then a year later end up playing the Cardinals in that World Series. Um, I think for our younger listeners on this podcast, I think it's interesting to note that it's so much different than nowadays of when we were talking to the other guys in here. You know, you walk in the locker room now, 
and you can watch any game at any yes. time on TV, right? Any so, game, any pitcher. So you can scout, you're yep. paying attention, you know who's doing what, you're watching yep. the highlights every night. I think it's interesting that in 1982, you guys had not seen each other, right? And so you're showing right. up. They're talking about scouting reports that they had that they didn't know, relying on scouts and, Correct. you know, don't have the at-bats, don't have – now you have an advantage because you had been here, you know, mm -hmm. so you know a lot of the guys. Yes. Um, and, and, and Pointer, kind of vice versa for you, you, you know, knew some of the guys there in Milwaukee. But mm -hmm. – uh, that's an interesting deal. Not you know nowadays we see the interleague all the time. You're seeing you know even if your team's not playing, you're able to watch them on TV. But uh, it's a different deal back then, right? Completely different, um, uh, particularly for the catcher, because back then the catcher was literally over time forced to learn who the hitters were uh, on each one of the teams and their strength, their weaknesses, and although. You hear so much about shifts today and hitters' trends. Well, they were all hand done, as opposed to computer driven today, like they are. They had ground ball red, you know, green fly ball, you know, uh, squiggly thing, you know, base hit, you know, X where it was, and after you know 150 at bats, that chart kept growing, and pretty soon you're looking at a guy's at bats over a two or three year period. And you know what his trend is, mm -hmm. hitter's trend is. And now you in the game meeting back then, based on your study of those charts and your memory from being there all that year, I mean, it was there in the catcher's head. So when the team meeting started, pitching coach was there with the catcher and the starting pitchers. And that's how you went over it. And catcher was also responsible for – who's hot right now, who's not. So that meant who's coming next series. So you look at your box scores or whatever that next morning, and you're watching theirs, and you say, hey, Rose is on fire. If we hold him to one or two hits, we are we got a good shot at beating Big Red Machine. Mm -hmm. Because whenever Rose got three hits, he won the game. Somehow he became a factor. But if you could hold Rose to one or two, he wasn't a game factor because he wasn't on in front of bench, Morgan, Perez, all these bashers, Foster. And so if you kept him to just two on base that night as opposed to three, they might hit a homer, but it would be a slow solo shot. Mm -hmm. And now you got a chance to catch up. But when Rose was three, one of those three guys I just mentioned or four guys going to homer, and he's going to be on, and now you're done. <laughs> So this was a responsibility the catcher had today. Today, all he has to do is come in at 9 o'clock in the morning, okay, and stay there till 2 or 3 in the afternoon. He'll not only see every batter and what he's done for the last week, okay, and you'll also see every pitcher and every relief pitcher as many times as he wants. He can watch one pitcher his last 30 outings mm -hmm. in a row if he wants. So – the technology today has made it easier, particularly on the catcher, but everybody gets to see now. And, I mean, it's incredible. Uh, of course, I would have loved to have had that. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, you play when you play. Yeah. You know? When, when I would walk in the locker room uh, here in my time, the starting pitcher that day for the other team, he was on loop. On every TV. Sure. So anywhere, any room you went into, you looked on, it was you there You was. got to see the starting pitcher. There he was. So there was no surprises. I no. mean, you knew everything about no. it. And then guys would go in and do their homework on their own, on relievers. Sure. We would do our homework. But I would, you know, Chad Blair, our video guy, when I was a starting pitcher, he would hand me a drive, and it would have the, you know, whoever we were, my yeah. opponent next. Yeah. And it would have their last you know, you could ask them for whatever, but typically their last 15 at bats. Right. And it's boom, 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 right after, One after so, another. So I'm able to watch their whole lineup in probably 10 minutes. Sure. Every one of their last 15, exactly. 20, 30 at bats. So, you know, there's there's not a lot of surprises, and that's right. where guys get exposed. You know, Ozzy was talking about earlier. Right. Once, once some of these guys start playing too much, they're like, stop playing me because they, yeah, you know, right. they figure out the, right. Right. the uh, my weaknesses. But sure. what was the uh, – as you start getting into the postseason um, and, and you know the Cardinals are in it, you know, kind of what's that feeling for you guys? I mean, you guys were a monster of a team 
at that point and as you're watching that and you know knowing that maybe there's a chance you're going to match up with the cardinals yeah well i look back and reflect and what was clear to us is you know we had just a monstrous home home run hitting club and harvey used wall bangers because we just sort of walls down every night and we were at a point where we felt we were going to win everything by the time it was you know august because we're getting two and three homers every night. And people forget about Cecil Cooper. They don't remember Ben Ogilvy. Both of them had hit 40 homers and did 30 regularly. And Gorman Thomas and all these mashers, right? And so we were very, very confident. The thing that hurt us badly was the injury to Vukovic and the injury to uh, Raleigh Fingers. Mm -hmm. So we played the last month without Raleigh. And we effectively played, you know, the, the last, you know, month, month and a half with Vukovic, you know, who was a great, great command type pitcher, you know, pitchability kind of guy with enough velo that he could hurt you real bad as a hitter. So, I mean, you know, we played that, you know, without them. Now, I'm not here to make excuses. We got to the seventh game, and the best team won. That's mm -hmm. why I always look at it and always will. But I'm only saying that the doubts or the concerns began to surface, I know, in my own mind when it became clear we were going to win it, and it became clear St. Louis had a shot at it because they were a different style of club from us. And they didn't bang it out like we did. And... If you didn't have your max going against that group, they'd steal the base, they'd hit the ball on the turf, be safe at first. They cut off every ball you hit in the gap that was on turf that normally would be to the wall, and a ground ball could end up a triple like that from Molitor or Yant, okay? They had players mm -hmm. could cut that ball off. And you couldn't get even a double when the ground ball got to the second baseman's backhand. Any time on turf in that, on a fast club like that, the guy who hit that ball, he's hauling because he knows he's got a clean big league shot at a double on a ground ball past the second baseman to his backhand. So that kind of club could give a club like Milwaukee's in 81, 82 trouble because these guys – Played solid defense. They had a dead-on closer in Suter. And if they got to the last three innings leading, you were in trouble. Yeah. So it was around late September, middle September, realized this is the one club that might give us some trouble. Hmm. And they did. Yeah, and we, and we were talking about that with the other guys, and Ozzy said that. He's like, we, we had a psychological advantage over not just Milwaukee, but teams. Every. Because every, they everybody. knew that we were going to run, Correct. and they couldn't stop us. Correct. Even you know, Too uh, many. Tom, Too many. Tom Hurst said they, they'd try to pitch out, and it didn't help. You didn't know, matter. like you can't, you can't throw us out. And our defense, you know, I've heard Whitey say defense never slumps. Correct. Right? I mean, you had – Correct. You, you nor look, to speed. Nor That's to speed. And, <laughs> they, yeah. and, and we, you know – Whoever had the stopwatch on the pitcher, because he didn't run the catcher, he ran the pitcher. Right, right. He'd look in and I'm give much. you a thumb up or a thumb down. He's right. over one four or he's below yep. one four. And, and that's if it. If it was over one four, the game is over. Yeah. Yeah. We scored uh, in the in game four, we scored two guys on a sacrifice fly. Mm hmm Center field warning track and Gorman slipped a little bit after he caught it, and Ozzy scored from second. Hmm. So I mean, speed and defense doesn't slump, you're right. Yeah. And um but that's when, you know, the you know, person like myself tries to sort through it all, especially as a player with that kind of responsibility as the catcher had back in that day. I mean, I said, I know all those guys, and it's an advantage because I, I know how to deal and pitch with, against Hernandez. I know what to do with George Hendrick. I knew all that. Okay, What was the intangible was their speed and their ability to – you know, do these things. And defensively in the outfield, particularly on ta on turf, mm -hmm. you know, that automatic double, the second baseman's backhand on the ground, just turned into a single because McGee was going to cut it off. Yeah. 
and Coleman was going to cut it off if McGee couldn't get to it. Mm -hmm. So the, it was a, as you know, the Dodgers way back, not so back, but in my time, but way back for a modern context, they won the same way, pitching and defense and speed. And so the formula still is out there. People ask me, well, is there any way, you know, they change from this, uh, you know, swing plane stuff and home run stuff? Oh, yeah. They can go right back to a – before Whitey Ball, it was Billy Ball. Mm -hmm. Billy Martin played the same way in Oakland. So it's not a new strategy. Mm -hmm. And if you want to, you know, design your team, start drafting kids that run, you know, 3-9 to first base, play center field and shortstop. And get yourself some, you know, Friday night pitchers at the, you know, Triple A. I mean, at the college level. Before long, you incorporate that into your whole strategy, right from early in the minors to the major leagues. You go right back to winning the same way. Yeah. So what's that conversation like with you guys? So the Cardinals win, you guys win. You're you're going into the World Series. You know you have that insight. Obviously, they're leaning on you heavily, yeah. right, for input. So yeah. So how are you trying to prepare your guys for what you know they're about to see? Oh, well, you have the team meeting. You sit down. Pitchers come. Relief pitchers come. Pitching coach comes. I say, oh guys, same way with the advanced guy had sent his reports in, and they're mm -hmm. all laying there too. So this is serious business, right? And so, you know, hey, I played with this guy. Five years. All right. Hernandez, you have got to get the ball up. You have got to get the ball close to him with velocity. If you put anything out over plate on him, anything slow for strike, unless it's back door where he's reaching or giving up, you throw him anything slow, change, slider, curb ball, it's his nitro ball. So hard stuff for strikes, middle in up. And slow stuff for balls. Doesn't say don't throw him a changeup. Mm -hmm. Throw it to him in the dirt. Mm -hmm. Doesn't say don't throw him a curveball. Bounce it with two strikes. Because if you think you're going to get him on something slow and he's two strikes and whatever, he's going to nail you. And so you have these kinds of discussions to them all. So funny. I, remember, I just remember he, he'd, he'd chirp all the time. He'd go up there looking 2 0 with dead red. Guy throw a slider and he hit a double in a gap. That's right, or Homer. <laughs> never miss it. <laughs> and never miss it ever. So these are the things you want known. Mm -hmm. And so I remember vividly that, you know, that meeting. Yeah. We uh in the previous segments have all agreed and and I said it was two team fulls of good players, mm -hmm. good guys yeah. that were smart baseball players. Right. Took it real serious. And they and I some team had to win. Right, right. Like I said, the best I agree. team if won. The fingers game are there. Seven. We we probably don't. Maybe not. But you'd had to er, you'd probably had to use him six outs minimum. You might have brought him in at sixth leading, okay, and say we were had what three to one in the top at bottom of the sixth. In in game seven. Game seven. Yes. So if he'd have had to come in mm -hmm. to put yeah. a lock on it, three to one, six, seven, eight. And ninth. And if he'd have been Keith, healthy. Keith got the big hit off of McClure in the seventh. That's correct. And that's correct. And it tied it, and then it went on ahead. But, I mean, you know, if so, Raleigh would have been there, and and I guarantee you, three to one in the sixth, he, Harvey would have said, let's go. Yeah. Sleep and tomorrow. Time to that's rest right. in the Let's go. Yeah. I know this isn't three outs and see you later. Mm -hmm. This isn't six outs and see you later. This is 12. <laughs> now. Let's all do this. Also and we'll said all it was see you another thing that well that worked wrong for you guys is you kept Raleigh on the roster. Didn't have, didn't have that other reliever that didn't, you needed. Yeah, a few didn't times. have another pitcher. And that's the gamble they had to because he was that right. close. He didn't right. warm up. Right. So we're crossing our fingers. Maybe he'll get in the game. You know, maybe he will. And what was his injury? Oh, he had back, lower back. Okay, lower back. And Vuk, I mean, he he got through the that. Five innings, yeah, he and then he good. they in the bottom of the sixth when they got him funny, but he's throwing eighty four miles an hour, I mean, and had been doing that sort of thing. But he had a a, a great great slider. Eighty four, he had some good cheese that day. Huh? Yeah, that was well, good I'm for me. Eighty four, right? <laughs> but his slider was what made him a Cy Young Award winner. I mean, he just run through a right handed bat and just eat him up. Hmm. I mean, he could tell him, 
It's coming now. <laughs> okay, he, he, I'm, I'm sure he he started telling Lazinski because, because if Lazinski and Schmidt came in, played his, he knew, hey, Teddy, I'm going to get both of them at least three times. And if they get a fourth at bat off me, and both of them, one of them's going down four times. Neither one of them could hit a slider to save his life. He'd, he'd cough at him and woof him. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> hey, he, had, he wore two different shoes. Oh, he yeah. had two different shoe contracts in a World Series, so he got paid for two. Oh, wow. And then in yeah. our, we said, uh, you know, in, in our scouting report, we, we kind of kicked the scouts out of the meeting because mm-hmm. I had just been there. Yeah, right. And they said, right, you know, pitching right. out high and outside, ogly low and in. I, and I'm, I go, uh, that, that doesn't <laughs> sound good to me. I'm not going but anyways, now. they came out and they said, Vukovic – is wearing an extra baggy jersey because he's trying to disguise his changeup. And we're going. Oh, Give what? me a break. What kind of scouting report is Give me a break. He only well, like I, I'm telling you, he didn't have a fastball. He didn't have it. No, 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 he just didn't have it for the last however many times he started. So that caused some anxiety too in my in my mm-hmm. brain. But anyway, his slider, if you're right-handed, I mean, you're going to strike out or you're going to hit the ball bad. Because it's one of the best sliders I ever saw. Not horribly hard. I used to call it the back, the camelback slider. It was like, you know how the low of a camel on a one-humped camel, mm-hmm. okay, is low, and it would start out low and, like, hit that hump and go down, and then over the hump it'd come straight downhill, man. And it was like you were trying to hit a camelback slider, and nobody could. Right-handed. Give me that... Camel back now, Petey boy. <laughs> he got no chance. <laughs> so you talk about the injuries, and that you know that's such a part of sports, right? I mean, it, you can be yeah. the best team. You, mm-hmm. my agents always always said this when I was playing. He said you don't have to be the best team; you have to be the hottest team when you get in. That right? helps, and and that or the healthiest. And and you that look helps. at you know NHL. It's so hard. They say it's the hardest one to win because it's such a physical and brutal playoff yeah. to to get yeah, down yeah, to. Yeah. It. You're going to lose guys, right? And that's sure. that's the hard part. And, and from the Cardinal standpoint, you know they had a lot of young guys mm-hmm. that stepped up, whether yeah. it was from injury or just opportunity. That yeah. that Whitey saw them was trying to craft that team sure. to fit sure. their stadium and their model he wanted For to sure. do. And I think that's as I'm you know diving more into this, I think that's one of the more impressive things is how you know a, a John Stuper throw in Game Six mm-hmm. in a critical moment. Who was a rookie yes. that year? Dave stepped Lapointe. up. Who's who won game two? Is that correct? No, no, no. I lost. Well, I didn't have a decision in either one of them, but I was. I started game four. Game four had a fairly decent lead, and dropped the ball at first base. And that's when it came um, back. Got another out. Was five to two, and their mom, the momentum shifted, and they got seven straight yeah. hits off the relievers. Yeah, yeah. And that, that was like a that we came back from there. Yeah, I remember. and and right. that was the momentum shift because they won five game five pretty easily if I remember. Mm-hmm. But in that thing, you know how momentum goes. Robin Yount check swing up at his eyes. It's a looping, you know, two RBIs and I don't know if that was off caught or might have been caught. No, that was off of Doug Bear. And then oh, Jeff yeah. Lottie came in and gave up Cormac Thomas single up the middle to they put him ahead, but. Don't you know they were a good team? Yeah, they, right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 for sure. Cesar Cooper was hitting three thirty six, and nobody knew it. <laughs> you know, I would looking at you know, you know, Rice with Boston. He had one hundred and eighteen RBIs, I think, that year. Cooper had one hundred twelve. Yeah, just fighting it out. Not he was fighting it out there for the longest time for triple crown. Mm-hmm. And people it's don't even a, talk like about that earlier that. Uh, you know, Jimmy Gantner was your worst hitter at right. 287 or, you know. a break. <laughs> this, you know, this was serious business, man. Mm-hmm. These guys were all over the field. You know, I mean, big but, league star yeah. type players. And, you know, it it was a real team. It yeah. was a real deal. Yeah. Well, you have Ozzy, who's relatively young. You have her, who's relatively young. You have Willie, who comes up that year. Mm-hmm. You know, but then you have your older guys. You got Bruce. You got you know Gene Tennis. You got some of those guys on that team. It's just a, it's it's such an interesting mix mm-hmm. of the two teams mm-hmm. and star power and mm-hmm. young guys that are contributing. But uh, what was the from? You know, you have a little different perspective because you you played there. But um, what was the 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 sense of of Whitey? Was there a respect from the other team of Whitey? 
uh, and you know from the Brewers of going in like man this guy you know because you hear from the Cardinal side and it's like man this guy made every every decision was it was so good it was the right decision he knew what to do when to do it uh, and it sounded like they had so much trust in him that in in their leader and what they were doing you know that that went a long way well, but what was it from the other side Harvey was really good and they were close friends right I mean they mm -hmm. they managed a lot of like and. Mm -hmm. And then, and Tarvey was another guy you really didn't second guess that much. He's just a trusted well, guy. You see, you know, when you're talking about these two guys, both have been in baseball forever. Both had played in the major leagues a long time ago and been managing baseball teams, minors in the major league level forever. So, in terms of understanding and knowing the game, okay, these guys, you know, that's a given, all right? But, you know, there are guys. From our perspective, when I say our, I say Milwaukee's perspective. I mean, there were, you know, managers out there. The Russo was around, the White Sox. Whitey was over here. Uh, Billy Martin had been there and left in Oakland and back and forth with the Yankees. So there were a number of managers out there. And every player, I don't care what, organization they're in on whatever championship quality team they all are going to love their manager but there are always at the major league level always four or five who stand out okay as these guys won't mess it up you give them a team that's capable of winning and they will strategically keep you in a position to win the game and not do something stupid and throw it out the window so I mentioned the names. Mm -hmm. These guys, every team knows that, oh, he'd be a great manager to play for. He'd be a, he won't mess it up. You put him in the eighth inning tied, and you figure you're headed to extra innings, don't worry. He'll keep the ship steady. There won't be any big shifts in the bow of this boat. Just hang on, and we'll get there. So there are others that don't have those kind of creds. And you know that, too. So when you're talking about these people, you're talking about the kind of people that say, hey, my guy's as good as yours. Mm -hmm. Your guy's as good as mine. Okay, wash. Now let's get down to what this game's really about, and that's the players. Let's go play the games. Game one, play ball. Neither one going to mess it up right. as managers. You get them in a position to win the game, they will. They'll know right what to do. If you get down 10 runs in the third inning, there's nothing they can do. Right. Yeah, yeah, and it's fun to see them start managing against each other, right? Because they're, yeah. they're the managers. I think what, yeah. what people don't realize is managers are usually about three innings ahead of, yeah, of what's going really on in the good game. Ones. Making those moves, putting really good ones. You know, whether the relievers, the pinch runner, Correct. the pinch hitters, those types of things. And that's that, where that game starts to come into play. Yeah, well, that's the, the sad part I have with what the changes are bringing today with, you know, forcing the relief pitcher to yep. base three batters. DH in both leagues. Now I'll get off the soapbox here in a second. But the great subtlety of our game begins in the sixth inning. The real subtlety of our game comes in the seventh, eighth, and ninth, where the game's going to be determined. And all of that is all-inclusive with the relief pitching in the game. The age comes in, there's no subtlety. You know the pitcher isn't going to have to bunt. Nobody bunts. Yep. You're not going to have to pinch hit for him because he's not even in the lineup. The DH is doing the batting. And so I say to myself, it's still a beautiful game. It's a wonderful game. And I still have faith in this game long, long term. But it's changed dramatically. And it's so dramatically changed our strategy of each and every game, night after night. So I'll be frank. You don't have to have 20-20 vision anymore to manage a major, major right. baseball game. Mm -hmm. And if you've got better than 20-20 vision and you're managing a major league baseball game in the old context... Now we'll find out who the managers are and who the dumbballs are, okay? <laughs> and it's everybody is all kind of dumbed down today. Yeah. 
the fact that, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not as difficult a job anymore. Today, it's much more, I would say, about managing 26 personalities yeah. and getting everybody pulling in that same direction versus the X's and O's, right? No, a lot no, of those, no doubt. A lot no of those doubt. are already made for you analytically. Yeah. Yep. You know situations. You know you pretty much know who's going to pinch hit. That's right. You know, and like you That's said, the right. DH coming out. I played in the American League for a year, and it was a totally different game. Completely different. And and uh, you know you could really go with three bench players, yeah. backup catcher. A lot of them did. Maybe maybe one or two other ones, and right. then just Absolutely. load up your bullpen if you I want. Got it. Um, I got it. So it is different. Uh, yeah. it, it is. A lot. Do you think it will ever come back? Well, I think it will. Because I think that this game shifts. Yeah. Okay? Swings of the pendulum. And, you know, the story's too long. I'll only say that there was a major league game, in essence, a professional baseball game played the day Custer ate it at the Little Bighorn. Okay? <laughs> it was Philadelphia Athletics and the Chicago Cubs, and I think the score was 11-14, to 14, and I think Philadelphia won the game. And so when I realized that, I think maybe 1886 or something, um, when he ate it that day, and they actually played a game that day and had a box score that day, and it was a, quote, professional, quote, major league game. All right? Now, all I can say is I'm not worried about this game because mm -hmm. this game, everything has been tried since Custer ate it. Okay. <laughs> Well, everything's been tried now, and it's still here. And now we're trying a DH in both leagues. Yeah. Well, everybody just calm down. <laughs> It'll get back to where it's supposed to be over time. Yeah. Now, if you, you know, are in a hurry, well, maybe you ought to read some of the Chinese philosophers out there to, <laughs> so your perspective on time changes a little bit because it's not going to be in my lifetime. Yeah. But it'll change back. Yeah. Just give a little time. And just remember, box score, day cusser, little bighorn, we're still playing baseball <laughs> here, and it still looks pretty much the same. Yeah. So. To, to wrap this up, what, what is your, if I say 1982 World Series, what, what is your, what's your first thought? What, what's your. What, really simple. I'll never forget it as long as I live. I sought it for my whole life. I sought it for my entire life, playing a seventh game of the World Series. Yep. God, that's the pinnacle. And I will never forget the bottom of the sixth inning. I went out, warmed up, Bukovic, and I said, we're going to win. I felt it, I believed it, and I said, we're going to win. And I never felt anything like it as a professional baseball player or anywhere else as I've walked this earth, as long as I have, that very moment, in that very game, at that very time, I thought I was going to win the World Series and was convinced of it. Now, it didn't work out that way. But you ask me what I remember? Mm -hmm. I remember that. Not everyone gets to play in the seventh game of the World Series, and not many people get to think they're going to win it. And I thought I was. So life, it's roll the dice, man. And it came up the wrong number. Yeah. Well, I love it. And I love that you're, uh, you know, here and willing to talk to us about it and, and, and that you're a part of this Cardinal family and celebrated right. so well here in St. Louis. And um, congratulations on the Thank Hall you. of Fame. Thank well you. deserved. And uh, Lucky boy. Lucky boy. Well, pretty good too. All right. Well, good and lucky is not bad either. <laughs> That's right. That's a good combination. But thank you so much for being on the Chatters Box here and, and helping us um, highlight this 1982 season uh, of the Cardinals. And uh, appreciate you being here and, and yeah. being a part of it. Kyle, appreciate it. Dave, thank always you, a pleasure. Thank you a lot. Yep. Thank you.